An encore it is, then. Cartwheel. The town that once was plagued by raiders, but still stood strong. The place that accepted me when I was fresh from my stable is gone. Cartwheel. Silver Snip's home. The place she took on the responsibilities of her mother's shop and made it into something better. It was the place where the Equestrian Express building was. The place where old box tape took me on as a courier. Even that's gone. All of it destroyed by the stallion who ran the Los Alicorn branch of the Steel Rangers. Elder Wolfsbane. No. Just Wolfsbane. A stallion as cruel as him doesn't deserve to be called Elder by me. He's the pony I once took a chance on, and trusted. By destroying Stable 97 and the Devil's Children program, that was going on in there. He's a smart pony. He knew that all he had to do to get my help was give me information he had on finding my friend Stardust. I fell for it like a foal. Just like a child I really am. Now that I did what he asked, he wants me. Why? I have no idea. More than likely, he wants the Mark II, just like all the other ponies who knew about it. Or did he want me because a long time ago, Mom said she'd send me to Elder Wolfsbane once I was better. Maybe he didn't like a mare like me running around and helping ponies the way I did. Whatever the reason, I'm his prisoner now. And so are my friends. The Griffins that called themselves the Unchained Talons are working for Wolfsbane. After the attack on Cartwheel, Wolfsbane, the Griffins, and his ponies trapped us near the West Gate after it was destroyed. We didn't stand a chance against the might of Wolfsbane's forces, so we surrendered. The Griffins carried us away and brought us to the huge airship Wolfsbane called the Palisade. Airships like that were known as Zeppelins. Recalling some of the books I remember reading from my mom's collection. Now we were in cells deep inside the belly of the beast. Aura was in the cell across from me. Wingnut was with Stardust in the cell to my left. Windthrasher was next to Aura's cell. And Yaksha, the strange zebra who decided to travel with us, was in the cell with me. In the past hour, no pony had come to check on us. The Griffins, however, did make sure to put a magical blocking ring on my horn, so I couldn't just teleport out. They took all of our stuff, even checking our manes and tails to make sure we weren't hiding anything. That meant I didn't have my bobby pins or my trusty screwdriver. So, picking the lock wasn't an option. Even if I did still have them with my magic fully blocked, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. I wasn't good at picking locks, but only if I had my magic. If I had to use my mouth and hooves, I'd fail. So, here we sat, waiting for some pony to come down here and either talk to us or tell us what they wanted with me. The other problem was, ever since we arrived, I hadn't seen Vervain. The Griffins had taken her somewhere else after we'd arrived. Shadow, you have some kind of plan, right? Wingnut asked. Sorry, kiddo. I'm fresh out of ideas. I said, leaning against the wall closer to his cell. But if you have any ideas, feel free to share them with me. I've been trying to think of something for a while now, but this place is set up a lot better than your stable cells. Wingnut said with a deep sigh. Every pony tells me I'm a smart colt, but I can't seem to come up with any kind of plan that'd work. Aura was lying on her cot in her own cell. She opened an eye to look over at us when Wingnut finished. Shadow, why don't you see if you can get a message out to the Talons? I've tried that three times now. Something's blocking my broadcaster in here. Even if I could get a message out to them, what good would it do? A lot of griffins would die if they tried to come save us. I doubt it. Remember Apollo has good standing with the Steel Rangers? Even the Lost Alicorn Branch? If we could get him to talk to Elder Wolfsbane, then maybe he could get us out of here without much trouble. My dad's a good negotiator. Aura said. Stardust spoke up. Even if he is, I don't think it would do us much good. They may let us go if Apollo talked to the Elder, but he wouldn't let Shadow go. He wants something from her. 
He also would not let me go. These steel rangers hate my kind. Yaksha said with a sigh. I don't see why he'd keep you here, Yaksha. It's not like you've done anything to Wolfsbane before. I said. True, but I am a zebra. He will kill me based on that fact alone. The Steel Rangers Las Olicorn branch still seems to think that the war is going on and feels that all zebras need to die in order for Equestria to rise again. Yaksha said. Aura said, Yeah, they're a bunch of assholes. I mean, what's the big deal with zebras anyway? Yeah, there are some like the Romans who want to take over or whatever. But not all zebras are bad. Look at Sheena. She's a good mare. Same for the other zebras I know. I just wish you could think of a way to get out of here. I said, looking at my pit buck. And once again, trying to find a signal to broadcast from. I mean, I could understand if my pit buck was a normal one. And had like a broadcaster attached to it. But the Mark II was supposed to be special. Oh, this thing had a stronger broadcaster on it. Maybe Box Tape will do something to help us? He's the Sentinel, isn't he? Wingnut asked. He is, but that doesn't mean he can do much to Wolfbane from the look of it. His ponies ended up attacking him too. Well, most of them did. I said, still trying to figure out what I could do with my broadcaster. The menu did bring up a signal, but it was just the Pelican's emergency broadcast channel. A lot of good that does me. What if he called in the Steel Rangers from the Hidden Sands? Stardust asked. I'm not sure they'd help. I still don't know what happened with Apple Slice. And from what we know so far, it seems like Sapphire took over. But I'm not sure why. I said, giving up on the Mark II and looking over at Windthrasher. She hadn't said a word since we'd arrived here. She was just staring at the far wall. Windthrasher, are you okay? She jumped and looked over at me. Her eyes as wide as saucers. No. I noticed her eyes still had the red tint to them. Is it the bloodlust? There isn't any blood around us right now, so why would that still be bothering you? She shook her head. <clears throat> it's not the bloodlust. I don't know what it is. But ever since they put me in here, I've been feeling very... She grumbled. Claustrophobic. I didn't think stable ponies could get claustrophobic, Wingnut said. I don't like being locked in cages, she said, her voice getting higher. I need to get out. I don't want to be locked away. It's just like when Dr. Cell put that collar on me. I'm not a fucking animal, she yelled, jumping to her hooves and pressing her face to the bars of her cell. Calm down, Windthrasher, please. We'll find a way out of this, Stardust said. Oh, yeah? And who's gonna help us, huh? You? She hissed to Stardust. I'll get us out of here. Then, when I find that asshole, I'm gonna rip his fucking head off. I shook my head. This can't be good. Her eyes were glowing bright red now. Windthrasher, you need to calm down. No, you calm down, Shadow. She froze up for a second, then started to babble to herself. The walls are closing in on me. The cage is getting smaller. Don't lock me up again. I'll be good, I promise. Don't lock me up! Out of nowhere, she screamed, and the power of her voice split through the cell like it did when we were in the cave under Halo 1. Only this time, I wasn't ready for it. Same with the rest of my friends. We all covered our ears, falling to the ground as her scream went on. I tried to say something, but my voice didn't work. My ears felt like something hot was leaking out of them, and my vision started to go black. Then, when I thought I was going to pass out, she stopped her scream. A moment passed, and all I could hear was a high-pitched ringing noise. Then, when my hearing started to come back, Windthrasher started to ram her body against the bars of her cell. Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Yaksha moaned, then got to her hooves. She worked her jaw around like she was trying to get her ears to pop, then asked, I know that Windthrasher is part bat pony, but does she have another kind of DNA in her as well? What do you ask? I asked her as I watched my friends slam her body against the cell door again and again. Because bats like enclosed spaces. Being in a cell like that should not be making her act like this. She's part dragon too. Wingnut said. Fuck, that hurt. That would explain it. Yaksha said. What do you mean?
and dragons cannot stand to be trapped. They are creatures that like to roam around freely. They are damn near impossible to control, and very temperamental when things do not go their way, like being caged. Windthrasher looked over at her and hissed. Shut the fuck up, Zebra! You don't know anything! I'm a pony, not a dragon! If that is so, then stop acting like one. I think I know no more that than you do, Yaksha said. Windthrasher yelled, then went back to slamming herself against the bars. I'll kill them! I'll kill them all, starting with you, Zebra! Then she stopped. I'll break them down one way or another. She opened her muzzle again, getting ready to scream. Windthrasher, stop! We all covered our ears, but right as I said stop, the door down the hall opened. Wolfsbane and the young unicorn mare, who trapped my uncle and the crystal, walked in. He looked over at Windthrasher and sighed. I'm assuming that horrible sound came from you, monster. She grinned at him, her fangs shining in the dim light. Sure was. If you want to come out, and I'll give you a private performance. Or maybe your plaything standing next to you will want a sample. Plenty to go around. You're not going anywhere. Now shut up before I make you, he said. An encore it is, then, Windthrasher said, opening her muzzle to scream again. The mare stepped forward, her horn glowing. Time for a nap. This one's a little cranky. The mare's horn flashed. Windthrasher's eyes dropped and she fell forward. She was sleeping before she even hit the ground. Wolfsbane shook his head. Thank you, Sherbert. Why didn't we leave that one down a cartwheel? The mare asked. Because she's dangerous and I didn't want to risk her coming after us. She's also from Stable 7. She may know more about the Mark IIs. Wolfsbane walked over, past Windthrasher's cell, and over to mine. You better not hurt my friends, Wolfsbane, or you'll regret it, I growled. He yawned. It's been a long day, Courier. I don't feel like trading banter with you right now. Too fucking bad, because I have nothing better to do than insult you until I run out of ideas. The mayor of Wolfsbane, called Sherbert, came closer her horn glowing to a dull orange. Listen, we can make this easy or hard. Either you shut your yap, or I'll make you. I laughed. Go ahead and try, bitch. She gasped. Did you just call me a bitch? I'll have you know that I'm the youngest unicorn to ever become a senior scribe. So what? You still look like a bitch. I said, laughing again. Her orange eyes flashed, and she retorted, At least I'm not a slit-licking freak like you! Aura jumped off her cot. You better hope I don't get out of here, unicorn. No pony talks to my mare like that. Sherbert turned towards Aura, a look of disgust on her face. Gross! You mean you're the one she's doing things with? That's wrong in so many ways. Aura lunged at the unicorn. Her talons just scratching across her nose. The young alicorn yelped and jumped back. Oh, you'll pay for that, Griffin! Enough, Sherbet! Wolfsbane barked. The unicorn looked at her elder. But she just... I don't care. Aura is off limits. He said before looking back at Aura. My apologies, Aura. Sherbet is from an isolated village in the north. Her village is highly against same-sex relationships, and she hasn't adjusted her view of the world yet. Bite me, Wolfsbane. I'll have you know once ye your Apollo find us here. They'll make you wish you were never born. I'm not worried about your mother, Aura, or Apollo. They can't do anything against us. Right now, the only reason I'm not letting Sherbert do anything to you is because Gigi said she wanted you left unharmed. Now, be quiet before I decide to ignore her request. Aura, just let it be, I said. Wolfsbane, what do you want? I'm surprised you have to ask, Shadow. I thought that you would have figured it out by now. He said, looking back at me. The Mark II, I'm guessing? 
He shrugged. Yes and no. Then what do you need her for? Stardust asked. He shrugged. Her mother promised me that Shadow here would be sent to La Solicorn when she was cured. She's a powerful unicorn that doesn't have any control over her power. Grimm didn't stay long enough in Stable 28 to teach her anything. If Grimm had taken Shadow with her when she left, then we wouldn't be here today. She would have grown up in La Solicorn as a scribe, maybe even a knight or a paladin. Wingnut spoke up. So you're collecting on a payment from Shadow's mother? I frowned, saying, That makes me sound like some kind of slave. Not a slave, no. I don't believe in slavery. It's a disgusting practice, Wolfsbane said with a yawn. Then what do you call one pony selling another pony to some pony like you? I asked. I call it an investment. I've searched for ten years to find unicorns with enough raw ability as Grimm and you have. That's how I found Sherbert. She is powerful and her own parents couldn't teach her how to control her magic. I took her in, and with the help of some of my older scribes, they were able to get her to control her magic. That was the deal I had with Grimm. She knew that once Shadow was cured, she wouldn't be able to teach her how to control her magic. I found that surprising, since Grimm is a powerful unicorn herself. But, there you have it. She needed my help to find information on where the Mark II was so she could cure Shadow. Or Morning Star back then. My price was that she sent Shadow to me so she could learn to use her magic the right way, without hurting herself. I don't buy that for a second, Wolfsbane. Mom was already teaching me how to use my magic before she left, I said. I'm sure she did. But let me ask you this. How much did she really teach you? Did she teach you how to teleport? Did she teach you how to use that expulsion spell? No, she didn't. She taught me how to use my telekinesis, and how to control it better than most unicorns can, I said. Ha, <laughs> as I thought. I'm guessing you learned how to teleport all on your own. Same for the other spell you know. I nodded. I read something in a book I found in Stable 28's library, and learned how they both worked. I didn't know I could do them until later. That makes sense. You see, from what Grimm told me when you were a foal, he used magic as a newborn. You don't hear that kind of thing happening a lot anymore. Your family thought you'd end up being more powerful than even your Uncle Pride. I sighed. Yeah, I get it. They thought I was powerful. What did that have to do with me now? And why the fuck did you come after me like you just did? You mean the attack on Cartwheel? He asked, sounding puzzled. Damn right. I did that because I knew you were with the Sentinel. If he saw me coming, he wouldn't have let me take you. I also knew that after I asked you to join my Steel Rangers back near the stable, and you refused, that you wouldn't come with me willingly either. So I decided to take you by force. Worked too, Sherbert said with a giggle. Sherbert, did I say you could speak? Sherbert looked away. Sorry, sir. Aura spoke next. So you destroyed an entire town and killed all the ponies there for that? He turned to look at her. No, not just that. I also needed to capture that bat pony, too. I saw what happened to her when Annapolis, and I couldn't risk letting her go crazy again. We had to strike fast and hard to capture you both. The rest of you were just a bonus. As to why I destroyed Cartwheel, that's a lot easier to explain. I hated that town and the sentinel that lived there. I wanted to wipe it off the face of our world for good. So you could say I killed three birds with one stone. I captured the bat pony, I captured the courier, and I destroyed the town that I hated more than any other. I slammed myself against the bars of my cell. You're a fucking monster! He grinned. There it is. There's the anger I've been wanting to see. Yaksha put a hoof in front of me as if she were stopping me from moving forward. 
Shadow, that is enough. Now is not a time for anger. She was right. If I didn't watch it, I'd make the same mistakes I did in Monopolis. So I took a deep breath and stepped away from the bars with my back facing Wolfsbane, looking at her. You're right, Yaksha. He's not worth it. He frowned, looking over at Yaksha. Keep your muzzle shut, Zebra. You're lucky that I still haven't killed you. And you are lucky that you had so many ponies with you when you took us in, or I would have killed you. Yaksha replied. Doubtful, he said, looking back at me. <clears throat> you think that I'm a monster, don't you? You don't know anything about me, Shadow. I've done more for the wasteland than you can ever imagine. You destroyed a town and p killed ponies there because you hated one old buck. A buck you didn't even kill. Yeah, you're a monster. He laughed. One town with not many ponies living there. I never used a super weapon to kill a town like Appleton or the Middle City Tower like you did. As he spoke, Sherbert pulled out the rangefinder with her magic. I'm surprised she was able to do it with something like this. It looks like just a stupid toy. Give that back! I yelled. She laughed. <laughs> no way. I want to take it apart and see how it works. She said, sticking her tongue out at me. Are you worried that I'm going to let her use it to destroy something, Shadow? Wolfsbane asked. Duh. That thing shouldn't be in any pony's hooves, let alone a pony like you. Wingnut said from his cell. This pony only works for some ponies. There's a special gem inside of it that works like a biometric scanner. Only the ponies that are on the spell or their descendants of that pony can fire it. Sherbert said, putting the rangefinder back into her robes. That's right. I'm assuming that you are one of the ponies that's descended from that shadow. So only you can fire it. Maybe a couple of other ponies. I wouldn't know until I have Sherbert look it over. Wolfsbane well, said. Now enough about all of this. It's time you start to tell me what you know about Project Aquila. As he said this, Aquila said to me, How does everyone know about that? Every pony calls a stargazer. I pushed her back to my mind, replying, What the hell is Project Aquila? Don't play dumb with me, Shadow. I know all about the project and the power that was created by the Children of the Night with Stargazer. I know that it was renamed to Project Aquila by Nimonet. I also know that it was the power that Grimm used to save your life because only something like that could have done so. Now, tell me what you know, he said. Fuck you, Stardust said from his cell. Why should she tell you anything? Yeah, fuck you, Wolfsbane, Stardust said as well. I could tell Stardust was holding back a laugh. Putting on a serious face, he said. You heard what he said. The Elder glared over at them and sighed. One more word out of any of you, and you'll be the first ponies I kill to make Shadow tell me what I want to know. I'm not talking, Wolfsbane, I said. Even if I did know what you were talking about, I wouldn't tell you. Why? Because you're still trying to protect your mother? Or because you want me to think you still don't remember your past? He asked. I don't remember my past. Sherbert laughed. You're full of shit. We know that you remember everything. Wolfsbane told me that your mom took away your memories. So I checked the spell when we brought you back in. The spell's gone, so stop lying. I glared at her. I really don't like you. Sherbert smiled. Good, because I hate you. I grinned at her. Ah, really? Because now that I'm getting a better look at you, you're kind of cute. I don't know what it is. Maybe I have a thing for bitches, but I bet you'd be really fun in bed. I'm sure you'd show Aura and I a thing or two. Sherbert's eyes went wide. Take that back! I'd never do anything as disgusting as that like a pony with you or a fucking griffin! Calm down, Sherbert. She's just trying to anger you, Wolfsbane said, but the mayor ignored her elder. I don't know, 
You shouldn't talk about something you've never tried before. I grinned, before continuing. Sherbert, huh? Isn't that some kind of sweet treat? I wonder if you taste like Sherbert. I'd love to find out. Aura seemed to catch on to what I was doing. I bet she does. I wouldn't mind having a taste. The Aksha caught on quickly and grinned evilly. I once tried something with a mare called black licorice. I continued. Oh, really? And did she taste like it? Yaksha nodded, keeping her evil grin up. Oh, she did. Ah, oh, really? I said. Now I'm really curious. Hey, Sherbert, if you give me a taste, I may be in a better mood to help your elder out. Oh, and the best part is you'll get a new name out of it. Rainbow Sherbert! Wouldn't that be just great for all of us? The mare broke as she ran right at the bars, her horn glowing. I'll make you pay for that, you sick fu- I launched forward and slammed my hoof down into her horn. The mare screamed as she lost control of her magic, and I wrapped a hoof around her and flipped her around, holding her against the bars. There we go. Much better. Now we can talk with mature adults. Wolfsbane had a gun pointed at me. Let her go, Shadow. I moved my face closer to Sherbert's and smiled as I kissed one of her ears. Why? She's so cute, Wolfsbane. And she did get a little too close to my cell. I thought she was smart. The mare started to kick, but I held on tight as she yelled. Let me go before I turn you all into dust! I mean it, Shadow. Let her go. Wolfsbane was getting closer to me now. Now! I waited for a moment and then said, Not until you let my friends go, Wolfsbane. I can't do that. Yes, you can. You're the Elder. You make the rules here. I said this. The mare's horn started to glow again. I slammed my free hoof on it again. Uh-uh, dear Sherbert. None of that. Trust me. You can't cast a spell fast enough. If you don't let her go, Shadow... I'll kill the colt, he said in a low, threatening voice. I grinned. Do that, and I'll kill her. Just one quick twist, and her neck breaks. It'd be as easy as one, two... Then you'll be down a hostage and a friend. I'll just be down one unicorn out of dozens. Damn, he was a cold bastard. But I can't back down. If this is how you view the ponies to serve you, then I know for sure that I don't want to be one of them. I thought for a moment, then looked at Sherbert. See that, Sherbert? He doesn't see you as important enough to spare. He smiled at me, and moved his gun to point a wingnut in the other cell, saying over the bit, You don't understand, Shadow. I'm not worried about Sherbert, because I know you. You won't let one of your friends die. Shadow, just let her go. He's not gonna back down. Aura said to me from her cell. I looked at the Elder for a long moment, then cursed and pushed the mare away. Fine, have your temper tantrum waiting to happen back. Sherbert coughed and glared over at me. I'm going to kill you for that! Uh-oh. Looks like it might happen sooner rather than later. Just saying. I said, ignoring her outburst. Just remember what Wolfsben thinks about you and his so-called best unicorns, Sherbert. Wolfsbane holstered his gun, then said, Sherbert, calm down and go. I think we should let Shadow and her friends stay in here for a bit longer. But sir... I said go, he said, glaring over at her. Before I decide to have you punished for letting yourself get captured for something so stupid. She took in a deep breath and lowered her head. Yes, sir. She turned and headed out of the cells. When she was gone, Wolfsbane said, Now, if you are done acting like a filly, I'd like to finish this before we move out. Move out? What do you mean? Aura asked. We'll be leaving for La Solicorn, he said. Now, Shadow, I still want my question answered. What happened to Project Aquila? 
Grim used it, I know that much. But she doesn't have that power now. I need to know what happened to it. I just smiled, lying on the ground, my head resting on my hooves. I still have no idea what you're talking about. Fine. If you want to play like that, then I'll just have to get the information out of one of your friends. He said, turning towards Zora. How about we start with you? I'm sure I can get Gina to make you talk. I just smiled. Gina was the one who taught me to withstand torture. Not even she can make me talk. Even if she could, I don't know anything about this project. I'm just a bodyguard. We'll see about that, he said, heading towards the door. You all have half an hour before I get back with Gina. If I were you, I'd start thinking about telling me what I want to know. Mulspane, wait, I yelled. He turned. What? What did you do with Vervain? He smiled again. She's alive, if that's what you're wondering. He then continued out of the door. Oh no, Mr. Principal says we should sit here and think about stuff. Whatever shall we do with ourselves besides telling the goddess's honest truth about everything? Think of an escape plan? Not us! Wingnut said sarcastically, then whispered, We're supposed to be heroes, but look, captured by the bad guys once again. Aura glared over at me. Why the fuck were you thinking taking her hostage? Did you really think that would work? No, but I wasn't trying to get him to let us go. I said. Then what was all that about, Shadow? Yaksha said. It is a little embarrassing for me to tell strangers about the lustful fun I had when I was a young mare. I didn't even know you liked mares, Yaksha. I just wanted to make the unicorn angry. She blushed so hard, she looked away. It was kind of cute. I was just trying to help. Anyway, what's this all about then, Shadow? Aura asked. I smiled, lifting a small green gem from a small chain. I saw this hanging on her robes. Figured it was important. What is that? Nora asked. I want to see! Wingnut said. Yaksha smiled, seemingly recovering from her embarrassment. Clever mare. You are full of surprises, Shadow Star. That looks like a gem that will let Shadow take off her magic cancelling ring. Yeah, that's what I figured as well. I said, lifting the gem up and touching to the ring. I felt a small spark in my horn and was able to pull the ring off. I love it when I'm right. Are you sure that'll help? I mean, we're still locked in here. Or asked. Miles put something like that on me. I concentrated, wrapped Yaksha in my magic, and teleported us both out of the cell. Yep, I think we're good. Nice. Now, how about you get us out of here? Or asked. And what about Wind Thrasher? I looked over at Wind Thrasher, who was still lying on the floor of her cell. We'll have to bring her with us. I'm sure she'll be better once we're out of here. Yaksha looked over at Wind Thrasher. As long as she does not attack us, I cannot tell if we are the threat she said was real. Wingnut replied. She won't. Now can we get out of here, please? Yeah, I got you, kiddo. Once again, I teleported into their cell. Got them out, and did the same with Aura and Wind Thrasher. Once I was done, my vision was a little blurry, but it didn't last for too long. Maybe I was getting stronger with my magic. A few weeks ago, there was no way I'd be able to do this. Ugh. Damn, that feels weird. Stardust said, shaking his head. How do you do that all the time? I just shrugged. It doesn't feel weird to me. Maybe it's because you're not a unicorn. It doesn't matter. Let's get out of here. Somebody wake Wind Thrasher up. Or asked. Shadow, how's the pain? We'll figure out how to get outside and we'll fly out of here. I figured that shouldn't be too hard since three of us can fly. I said. That is if Wind Thrasher's calm. Wingnut was already shaking the bat pony. Wind Thrasher, wake up! She jumped, then looked up at Wingnut. What happened? You freaked out, and that unicorn knocked you out, I said. She shook her head, then looked around. 
Did they let us go? No, we're escaping. Are you gonna be okay, or are we gonna have to tie you up? Aura said. She nodded. I'm feeling okay. I just didn't like being locked up again. Well, that's a relief. Let's go before they figure out we escaped. Aura said. We'll also have to find our gear and get that rangefinder back. I agree. Maybe if we're lucky, we can take Wolfsbane down while we do it. I said, heading towards the door. Stardust was right behind me as we moved. What if Wolfsbane figured out that you'd try something like this? It could all be a trap. Then it's a stupid plan. If he thinks he knows so much about me, then he should know that trying to let me escape won't work in his favor. I said as I opened the door. It led into another room filled with lockers. Even better, from the looks of it, our things were tossed on one table. Okay, now I'm really thinking this is a trap. Stardust said as he walked over to grab his saddlebags. I took my own, checking that all my weapons were still there. They were, and even better, my barding was lying next to my bags. Either way, at least we have our weapons. They even left my plasma rifle. That thing really needs a name. Wingnut said as he put his smaller combat armor on and picked up old Festus in his revolver. I agree, Shadow. Be a lot easier to get out of here with our shadows. Weapons. Aura said, picking up her spear. Damn, I miss this thing. Stardust stood in front of us. Fine. If we're going to do this, then we're doing it the smart way. First, we need to find the rangefinder. Then, we need to find a way off this fucking thing. We can't take the time to try and kill Wolfsbane or the rest of the rangers here. No way! I'm going to make him pay for what he did to Cartwheel. I said. No. We can't do that. Especially if this is a trap. Wolfsbane knows more than he should. That means he's been watching you. If he planned on letting you escape, then he knows you'll come looking for him. Just like you did when you thought I killed Aura. We can't play his game. We have to cheat. Getting away is the main goal here. I stomped a hoof. Fine. But we have to find my uncle and Vervain. Aura looked over at me. I thought you'd be happy with him gone. I know, but he's not as bad as I thought, and he's been helping me. Yeah, he also killed Silver, or did you forget that? No, I haven't. But I'm also not going to just leave him with Wolfsbane, with what he's been doing is best to help me. I haven't forgiven him for what he did, but I'm trying. When Thatcher smiled. That's the way to do it, Shadow. You have to try and forgive. Violence is not the answer. I thought violence was always the answer, Wingnut said. Windthrasher looked over at Wingnut. Yeah, I'll admit that sometimes you can't help violence, but you should always try not to make that your first choice. <laughs> we don't have time for this, Stardust said. Fine. If we have to do this, then we're going to have to split up. No way, we're not doing that, I said. He has a point, Shadow. It's the only way we can get away and save every pony, Laura said. I just know something's going to go wrong. You know the old saying, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Maybe, but it's the only way we can do this, Stardust said. Aura, you go with Shadow and Wingnut. Wind Thrasher, Yaksha, and I will go look for that mare, see if we can find if she still has the rangefinder. You three, see if you can find Vervain. Hey, I thought I was the leader of this group. Stardust face hoofed. Are you serious, Shadow? Is now the time to be talking about that? I smirked. No, I'm not serious. I had you going for a second there. Purity is fine. But if something goes wrong, and get out of here quick as you can. And get the talons. And also, see if Sherbert has my uncle? I will. Now. Let's go. Stardust said. With Stardust, Yaksha, and Windthrasher leaving down the hall, following a sign that said Scribes on the wall, Wingnut, Aura, and I went the other direction. We weren't sure where Vervain was, but something told me that she'd be near Wolfsbane's room. A sign on the wall said Elder on it. I just hoped she'd still be alive. So what's the plan if we run into Steel Rangers? Wingnut asked. Kill them if we can, 
Run if we can't. I said, keeping my plasma rifle and very sharp sword out. My sword seemed to have caught Aura's attention, and she wanted a closer look at it. Where'd you find that shadow? I've seen you using it before, but never had a good chance to look at it. I looked down at the sword. I found it in the ruins next to the kingdom. The thing is very sharp. I was able to cut through a Steel Ranger armor with it. Nah, looks like misery. I stopped and looked at the black blade with the silvery edge to it. What's misery? One of the two swords that belonged to Greta. They went missing when she left the Red Talons. I've only heard stories about them from Tonto. She replied. Wingnut looked back at us, whispering, Do we really have time for this? Sorry, boss, she said. We can talk about it later. If that is misery, then we'll have to go see Tonto when we can. He'll know for sure. Just don't lose it. I don't plan to. It's a great weapon, I said as we came to an intersection. Wingnut checked to make sure no pony was coming. It looks clear, but it looks like a few ponies are sleeping down the hall to the left. Good work, kiddo. This sign here says Elder's Room to the right. Let's make sure to keep as quiet as we can, I said. We all snuck down the hall. It wasn't long, and ended in a small open area with three doors and a huge ladder that led further down the palisade. The door in front of us had a plaque that said Wolfsbane on it. Moving closer to the door, I took a moment to listen. I couldn't hear anything, so slowly opened the door, my sword ready for anything. No one was in the room. Not even Vervain. Damn it. She's not here. I'll go check the other two rooms. See what you can find while we're doing that. Aura said. Good idea. I said, looking over at Wingnut. Hey, kiddo. Keep an eye out while I check out the room. Can do. Just make it quick. He said, moving over to the door and watching for any pony while Aura started checking the other rooms. I walked over to a terminal at the far desk and tried to log on. I wasn't surprised to see it was locked. I hooked the Mark II into it and watched as the hacking software went to work. To my surprise, the Mark II was able to bypass the security in only a few seconds. I guess Wolfsbane's terminal was one of the easier terminals to hack. A moment passed, then the screen came up with a few options. Mark II locations updated. Mission notes, trusted elders, branch to take down, locations of stables, places the courier has visited, updated, Project Stargazer, updated, Project Grimm is working on, needs update, investigation on missing elder apple slice, and details of the courier. I knew I didn't have time to look at all the files, so I uploaded them to the Mark II. The last file, though, I had to look at before I left. If Elder Wolfsbane knew what happened to Apple Slice, then I wanted to know as well. Log 1. I sent a request to the Elder of the Hidden Sands, Steel Ranger's Apple Slice. Got a response from her that she wanted to meet outside of Cartwheel. Not sure why. I hate that town more than I hate the damned synths that roam around Los Alicorn. But this is her area, and I'll go where she wants me to go. The problem is, she was supposed to meet with me yesterday, and there still hasn't been any word from her or her troops. I've been trying to reach the bunker but I'm not getting a response from anyone there. I'm going to talk to this courier mare soon, once the mission with Stable 28 is over, and try to get her to help me with Stable 97. Then we'll see what I can learn from Melder Appleslice's whereabouts. Log 2. The courier left yesterday. She took the bait and is heading for Stable 97 to help a friend. That fool has no idea what she's in for. Either she'll fail and die, which makes getting the pip buck easier, or she'll succeed like she always seems to. If she does, then I'll still be able to get what I want from the stable. My mole inside the enclave will let me know either way. I still haven't heard from Apple Slice. I've tried sending a message to the bunker again, and I ended up getting one of the star paladins. Sapphire. She's trying to tell me she's the new elder. How can that be? Did something happen to Apple Slice? I'm going to send some of my paladins and knights to check it out. If something happened to the Elder, I need to know. For that matter, Staffire has been a star paladin for very long. From the reports I got about her, she's only in her second year. Noodle Cup or a Sandstorm should have been the ones to take over. We'll see what else I can find out. I worked hard to get Apple Slice put into power in Hidden Sands. After I had Crackerjack her kill her father. I knew she'd be the right pony to lead them. She doesn't ever interfere with my plans. This sapphire is 
unknown to me. I don't know how she thinks or what she's like. Hell, from my reports, she had a hoof in killing Cracker Jack. I even had him keeping an eye out for any pony from Stable 28, and thanks to her, he died. Years of work and planning down the drain, thanks to that bitch, the courier, and a fucking dashite. Anyway, I'm going to find what I can. Log 3. I just heard from my contact in the Enclave. Once that the courier was able to get into the stable, and better yet, she cleared the place of all the Enclave ponies that were there. I'm sending my contact there now to get as much information as I can about the memory machine before this new High Council Pony Nightshade does something. Speaking of Nightshade, I don't like what I'm hearing about this Pegasus. I need to do something about him. Maybe I can use the courier. For some reason, he seems to care about her. Maybe I can use it to my advantage. I'll have to think about it. Log 4. You've got to be kidding me. I just heard back from my contact. That fucking bitch courier locked the stable with her Mark II. I should have known she'd pull something like this. All my plans for the place, and now I can't even get in. I'm going to make her pay for this. When she gets back, I'll make her wish she'd never double-crossed me. Mark my words, I'll make an entire wasteland understand why you don't help a pony like her. Hey, Shadow, did you find anything? Wingnut asked. I think so. It seems like Wolfsbane had more plans for Stable 97 than I thought. He also has a pony in the Enclave working for him. They checked the stable and found out that I locked it down. There's more, but we don't have time to talk about it. I said, turning away from the terminal. I guess you were right about his plans for Stardust Stable, huh? Wingnut said. Are you almost done? I think so, I started to say. Then there was a beep on the terminal. Turning, I saw a message come up on it. Incoming message from Stratus. Huh? I wonder who'd be sending a message to Wolfsbane from Star Stratus. I said, clicking the button to answer the message. A second passed, and a voice I knew out came out of the terminal. Okay, Wolfsbane. I got your message about you having Shadow. What do you want? And if I found you hurt her in any way, you'll need more than that fucking Zeppelin to save your ass. I heard Nightshade say. Nightshade? I asked. Who is this? Nightshade asked. It's me, Shadow. Shadow? How the hell did you get in Wolfsbane's terminal? I thought he captured you. He did. I got out. It's kind of my thing if you haven't noticed. I'm trying to find my Auntie Vervain, and he stole the rangefinder. Shit. That's not good. I saw what he did to Cartwheel. Stratus is on edge right now, with what's been going on. If he has that damned weapon too, that's not good. Nightshade said. I'm not sure if he can use it. I think the Rainfinder has something only some ponies can use. It must have a biometric scanner on it. Well, at least that is some good news. Still, you need to get it back, Shadow. I'll see if I can get you some help. Whatever you do, try not to fight Wolfsbane. He's a lot stronger than you, even out of his armor. I know that. I think one of the scribes has it. I'll have Stardust and Windthrasher look for her. Good. I'll send the Guardian down there as soon as I can. Try your best to get off that thing. The looks of it, you're still hovering over Cartwheel. Wait, before you go, Nightshade? What? When I'm out of here, I need to talk to you about my dad, I said. A long moment went by as he said, I will see if I can set up a time to come and meet you. For now, you need to get out of there. Try and get to the top of that thing. There's a large landing platform. The Guardian will meet you there. Thanks, Nightshade. I'm glad I was able to help Shadow. Stay safe. I will. As Nightshade cut the connection to the terminal, or I came back into the room. Shadow, Vervain isn't here. We need to get out of here before some pony finds us. We'll head to the top of this thing. I just talked to Nightshade. He's sending the stranger down here to help us. I said as I hooked my Mark II to the terminal again and locked it down. Wingnut looked over, asking, What are you doing, Shadow? Locking his terminal so he can't use it anymore. Mostly to fuck with Wolfsbane, but also because it looks like there's information on here he may need, and I don't want him to be able to get to it. Not a bad idea, Shadow, Aura said. If we're heading to the top of this thing, then we'll want to let Windthrasher Yaksha and Stardust know. We're gonna have to trust that they'll find their way up there or off this thing, I said. I think we should go get them. 
Wingnut said. Yeah, I guess you're right. I said with a sigh. Let's hurry. I don't want to spend any more time here. Same here, Shadow. Also, Shadow, have you tried reaching the Red Talons? Nora asked. I hadn't thought about it yet. I said, checking my pit buck. Sure enough, the signal was there now. Looks like I can reach them. What do you want me to do? Send a message, then let's go. If Mom can send help, she will. If not, at least we tried. But talk as we move. Wingnut, you lead the way. Aura said as Wingnut moved out the door. Why am I leading? I'm a kid, you know. He complained. Because you're short. And a colt the rangers might not fire on you right away. Plus, you're old enough to full sit, so you should not say you're a kid. Maybe a young, angsty adult. Good point, but I still don't like it. Also, what does angsty mean? He said as he led us on. As he moved, I started to message the Red Talons. This is Shadowstar. I'm requesting help from the Red Talons. Steel Rangers from Los Alicorn attacked Cartwheel and took my friends and I prisoner. They are also working with the Unchained Talons. Gigi or any of the other leaders of the Red Talons, please come help us. We are on the Palisade. Once I finished, I set the message to repeat. Good job. Now I hope Mom gets that in time. Aura says we rounded the corner, heading back the way we came, and almost running into a Steel Ranger. The stallion was in his armor, but his humble was off. His eyes went wide, and he said, How the hell did you? I pulled out my sword and pointed it right in his eye. One more word, and I'll bury this deep into your skull. He blinked, then nodded. Aura smiled. He's a smart buck. He sure is. Now, tell me, where's Paladin Vervain? I asked. She's on the landing platform. Wolfsbane wanted to set an example to the rest of the rangers as to why we don't help ponies like you, he said. Where is Wolfsbane? Aura asked. He just finished up with Senior Scribe Skirbert. They're both heading up to the landing platform right now. They said something about taking care of some old buck, he said. Good. Now, get out of that armor? He looked confused. Why? Do it or die. Fuck you. Steel Rangers don't get out. He started to yell. I jammed the sword into his eye. He stiffened, twitched, then fell. When he did, a loud clang filled the hall. Wingnut winced, saying, That's ah, gonna wake the neighbors. As he said that, voices came out the way he just came. What the hell was that? No idea. Let's go check it out. We should run now, I said, pulling my sword out of the dead ranger and heading past him. We just rounded another corner when gunfire erupted behind us. The prisoners escaped! Sound the alarm! Yep, called it, Wingnut said as we ran on. An alarm started to go off as we reached a set of stairs. This might take us up to the landing platform, I said. What about Stardust? Wingnut said. Kiddo, we need to get out of here. The halls are too narrow for us to fight. Stardust will find us. Don't worry. I said. We already found you, Shadow. Stardust said as Windthrasher and Yaksha came running down the hall behind him. We figured it'd be best to get to the top of this thing to escape. The stranger's on his way to help, too. We also think Vervain is up there. I said as we ran up the steps. Wolfsbane and that loudmouth unicorn are up there as well, Shadow. We saw them when we reached the scribe's room, Yaksha said. Did you find the rangefinder or my uncle? I asked. Stardust pulled out the rangefinder. She just left it sitting on her desk. Yaksha had no problem getting it. No signs of that gem that they trapped pride in, though. Oricalus, not pride, I said. Either way, that bitch must still have him with her. Most likely, if I were to guess. She wants to make sure that he cannot break out of that trap spell, Yaksha said. Can he do that? I asked. I do not know. I know nothing about his power, but a spell trap like that she used is meant to keep dark power contained. A gem like that can hold a small amount of darkness in it for a while. If he is powerful, he can break out of it after some time, Yaksha said as we started working our way up the steps. I heard more rangers in power armor running towards us from one of the hallways. I'm going to assume you're right. Now, let's get out of here. It didn't take us long to reach the top, where we ran into a 
metal trap door. Aura came up behind me, saying, We have to be careful now. We don't know what to expect up here. They went up towards the landing platform! Hurry! I heard one of the Steel Rangers say. Fuck, I said, pushing on the trap door. No time to wait. I'd rather deal with Wolfsbane than the Rangers down there. Yeah, me too. Wingnut said as I pushed the door open and moved out in the open air. As I crawled out onto a large metal platform that was built on top of the palisade, a couple of sky carriages were tied down on one side. The tops of the cliffs next to Cartwheel were close to the same side as well. Standing in the center of the platform was Wolfsbane in his demonic-looking power armor. Standing next to him was Sherbert, and hanging by her hooves in a post that was well to the platform was Ravane. She had been taken out of her power armor. Her face was puffy, and she looked worse for wear. Auntie Ravane! I yelled. She looked up at me and said, Shadow Sweetie, you need to run! Wolfsbane chuckled in his armor. Very good job, Shadow Star. I knew you'd find your way out of your cell. As he spoke, ten ponies in power armor pushed their way out of the trapdoor behind us, forcing us to move away. What's this all about, Wolfsbane? I yelled. Why do any of this? I helped you! He moved closer to me. Easy, Shadow. I want you. I want your power. And better yet, I want your mother. My mother's lost her mind. She doesn't even know if I'm alive. And what power are you talking about? I yelled. Enough lies. I know about the power that lies inside of you, Shadow. I've known the whole time. I need that power if Equestria is ever going to be whole again. As for your mother, I want her to pay the price every pony pays when they defy me like she did. Her betrayal set me back ten years. If you knew this whole time about Aquila, then why didn't you just say something? He didn't have to do any of this. He didn't need to destroy Cartwheel. Before I knew it, a hoof came up and slammed onto my face, sending me rolling along the metal platform. Cartwheel had nothing to do with you, Shadow. I wanted a reason to destroy that town for years. You just gave me the perfect excuse to do it. Shadow! Aura pulled her spear back. Sherbert, make sure none of them interfere. Wolfsbane said as he walked closer to me. No problem, sir, Sherbert said, and as she cast a spell, holding my friends in place. I got back to my hooves, spat blood on the platform. So, this is the real side of Elder Wolfsbane, huh? I said mockingly. I guess the stories about you are true, then. You're nothing but a fucking monster. No, Shadow, he said his helmeted head getting close to mine. Yes, I am a monster. He kicked me again. One of my ribs snapped and pain ran up the side as I flew into one of the power-armored stallions who were now surrounding us on the platform. As he walked towards me again, I looked up at him and smiled, doing my best to hide the pain. You're a coward, and that's what you are. A coward, huh? And what makes you say that? Wolfsbane said. He picked me up and threw me the other side of the platform. I gagged and spat more blood on the floor. My vision grew red. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't need your bitch to keep my friends back. He stopped and looked at me like I was a strange bug. You think that I'm scared of fighting any of you? She knows you are! Mora yelled. You need your rangers and spellcaster just to take her on. You can't even fight her outside your power armor. Sounds like a coward to me. He turned his head slowly to look at Aura. I'm not letting you all fight me for a reason. It's not because I'm scared. It's because I told Gina I wouldn't hurt you, Aura. I need Stardust because he's the only pony from Stable 97 who was fully trained for the program they were running there. I won't hurt the child, if I can help it, because he can be a useful soldier when he grows up. My scribes want to look over that bat's DNA, and that zebra is only alive because she can make a good bartering chip against the Romans. Yaksha's eyes went wide. I am no pony's bartering chip. The Romans don't mean anything to me. He laughed. 
I'm sure they don't. But you look like a zebra I know they're looking for. If you are her, then you're worth a lot of caps to me. As for Shadow, I need her pep buck. But I also need the power that's inside her. To get that, I need to force this power to show itself. You can't make Aquila show herself. She's caged and shied me. Only Mom can let her out again. I lied as I got back to my hooves. Bull's Blaine flipped around and slammed his metal-covered tail into my face. This time, my vision flickered when I hit the ground. Wolfsbane started to laugh. You know what I don't understand about you? Why are you so feared around here? You're nothing but a weak filly. Not a single pony should be scared of you. I pulled myself back to my hooves again, and looked up at the power-armored asshole as my horn started to glow. That's your problem, Wolfsbane. You think the ponies fear me? They don't. Ponies see me as a protector. A pony that stops bad ponies like you. And I'm not weak. I'm fucking stubborn. I fired my concentrated expulsion spell. The horns on his helmet started to glow as my spell slammed into him. Instead of Wolfsbane being blown back, my spell wrapped around his horns and fired back at me. I screamed as my own magic slammed into me, throwing me into another one of the Steel Rangers. Both of us went flying. I rolled along the metal platform, the ranger flying over the edge. This time I didn't get back up. Wolfsbane started to laugh. My friends all looked scared. Stardust yelled, Shadow! Get up! I couldn't move. I failed like I broke every bone in my body. My eyes were locked on the cliffs not far away as Wolfsbane stepped closer, saying, Where's this power that's deep inside of you? Come on, you do realize that you're going to die, right? I'm surprised that you aren't dead already. I'll admit you are as stubborn as your mother, that's for sure. It's just too bad that she's not here to see this. Oh, I'm sure she wouldn't care, since she doesn't remember you. Shadow, please get up, Wingnut said. I wanted so badly to do what he said, but that spell of mine was more powerful than I thought. As I lay there looking at the cliffs, I heard that bitch mare laughing too. Don't worry, sir. When we find Grim, I'll make sure to fix her memories. Then you can tell her all about this. Wolfsbane laughed. Oh, that would be just beautiful. I can't wait to see the look on her face when I tell her how I killed her daughter and took the power of Stargazer for myself. Fuck. I tried to say. Huh? What was that? Wolfsbane said, moving closer to mine. Sorry, I can't hear you, Shadow. Former courier. Wolfsbane, please stop this. Vervain yelled from where she was still hanging. Wolfsbane ignored her as a large gun popped out of his armor. I'll give you one last chance, Shadow. If you join me and use that power you have inside of you to help me rebuild Equestria, I'll let you and your friends live. Don't do it, Shadow. We can't win this, Aura said, tears streaming down her face. Don't let him hurt you anymore. I couldn't even move my head or my eyes. I just watched the cliffs, doing my best to bring up the ability to say something. I saw what looked like a pony standing at the top of the taller cliff. Who was that? And how the hell did he get up there? It took me a moment to figure out who it was. My eyes went wide and a little bit of hope built up inside of me. Enough that I was able to lift my head a little and say, Never. Ha! <laughs> Fine, have it your way then. Goodbye, Shadow Star, former courier mayor, and good riddance. Wolfsbane said as he pointed a large gun right in my head. The pony on the cliffs jumped and a burst of flame shot out of his hooves. He flew forward towards the palisade, then slammed into Wolfsbane. The elder flew back, rolling along the floor until he came to a stop next to the pole that held Vervain. A second later, I felt a restoration potion being pressed against my lips, and other than box tape saying, Drink this, Shadow, as a good girl. Wolfsbane got back to his hooves, and he glared over at the sentinel. What does it take to kill you? Box tape was still in his power armor. As Wolfbane yelled, he turned to face the elder. 
Not much. I'm an old buck. But I can't die until ponies like you are put down, Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane laughed. Now, father, is that any way to talk to your only son? Can you really kill me so easily? Father? Wait a minute. The son that box tapes up was dead to him was Wolfsbane? I felt my body start to heal a little. Box tape knelt down and gave me other potion. Shadow, you need to get up and stop that unicorn. Get every pony away from her. I coughed and said, But <coughs> what about you? He looked over at Wolfsbane. I have a score to settle with him. Box tape yelled at the elder. You are no son of mine, Wolfsbane. You lost the right to call yourself that when you betrayed your family in the Hidden Sands. I betrayed my family. You're the reason Mom died, Wolfsbane yelled. If you would have just told her to stay home and not go out on that one last mission, she would still be alive today. It should have been you that went on that fucking mission. But you just had to stay home, didn't you? You just had to run your fucking courier business. No pony was going to stop White Oaks from doing what she wanted. Your mother was a free spirit. That's what made her wonderful. And if you remember right, I stayed home for my children. Now, stand down before I have to teach you another lesson, Wolfsbane. I got back to my hooves and ran towards Sherbert. Ignoring the pain that still ran through my body as I did, Wolfsbane yelled, Kill Shadow and her friends! He wasn't fast enough. Sherbert looked like she had no idea what to do as I charged her. Before she could think of something, I flipped around and kicked her horn. She screamed as her spell broke and my friends jumped back into action. The Steel Rangers did as well. Shots started to fill the air around us as battle ensued. I slammed my hoof into Sherbert again, throwing her back, then twisting around and pulling out Dreamwalker as one of the Rangers charged me. My pistol barked and the Ranger's head whipped back as a bullet ripped through his visor. Aura flew over me, her energy spear glowing as she attacked two rangers who were trying to go after Wingnut. Stardust's rifle was going crazy as he fired his armor-piercing rounds into any ranger that tried to go after him or Windthrasher. Windthrasher opened her muzzle to scream, and screamed at three who were trying to get them from behind. Wingnut was using old Festus to make the rest jump or dodge his shots. When they did, Stardust would take them out. As my friends fought, I made my way over to the pole that Vervain was on and used my magic to untie her and lower her to the ground. Once she was down, I gave her one of my healing potions, saying, Drink this quickly. We need to get off this thing before the rest of the rangers down there figure out what's going on here. No. You get away. I need to help my father. She said, My brother's crazy. He wants Dad dead for years, and Dad can't keep fighting like this. His body can't take the strain that Tama puts on him. I looked over at Box Tape and Wheelsbane as they went on. For an old pony in power armor, Box Tape could move. He traded blow for blow against Wolfsbane like it was nothing more than a child trying to take on a master. But I could see that as he attacked the Elder, Box Tape's movements were getting slow and Wolfsbane's weren't. She was right. He couldn't keep this up for much longer. Something else bothered me as well. Where was Yaksha? I looked around and quickly got my answer. The zebra was running after a sherbert, who took the distraction of me saving Vervain to run for it. Yaksha tackled the mare, then slammed her face into the metal three or four times. Then she got back to her hooves. This one should really learn how to fight. Yaksha, are you okay? I asked. Why would they be otherwise? I also believe that this belongs to you, she said, lifting the dark crystal that had Oricalus. She tossed it to me, and I caught up my magic. As soon as I heard it close, I heard my uncle say, It's about time you found me, Star. Now, let me out of this thing. Um, how? I asked. Break the crystal? That should work. At least I hope so, he said. His voice sounded weak. I'll see what I can do, I said, tossing the gem to the ground and stomping on it. There was a large flash of light. When I pulled back my hoof, the gem was undamaged. What the hell? Yaksha came over and closely examined the gem. There is a symbol on the gem. It 
looks like ancient zebra. Can you read it? I asked. I can, but my ancient zebra is a little rusty, at least with this dialect. I can take a better look of it when we are out of here, she replied. Ray limped over to me, saying, We can figure this out later, Shadow. Right now, we have to get out of here. I picked up the gem. Worry, Callus, we'll get you out of here when I can. I understand. For now, at least put me somewhere dark. It'll help, he said. I placed him in my saddlebags and looked over at what was going on. Wolfsbane was still fighting with box tape. A couple steel rangers were still up and fighting my friends. I don't need to get out of here, but we also need to help box tape. If we can take down the rest of the rangers up here, that may be all for us. We can take down Wolfsbane. I agree. I will see what I can do, Yaksha said, pulling up the hood of her cloak and vanishing. Vervain limped over to one of the dead rangers, opened up his armor. As she pulled out the body, she looked at me, saying, Take care of that unicorn before she gets up. I'll go help my dad. Can do, I said, looking over at Sherbert. She was starting to come around from the blow she took from Yaksha. Pulling out my plasma rifle, I pointed it at her, saying, I'd stay down if I were you. She looked over at me with hatred in her eyes. Fuck you. I'm not scared of a weakling like you. You should be. She smiled. No way. Because you seem to have forgotten something. We have backup. Wait, what? I said. Then pain racked my body as something slammed into my side, throwing me across the platform. Yeah, should have left when you had the chance, I heard Gina say. Fuck. My body can't keep taking this kind of abuse. Looking up, I saw the Griffin had seven others in all Griffin power armor standing around Sherbert. I got back to my hooves, ignoring the pain in my side and the rest of my body. Still working for the Steel Rangers, huh? Gina grinned. I work for whoever pays me, Runt. Normally, I'd say this is nothing personal, but this time it kinda is. Every time I have a job, you just keep showing up. You're like a thorn in my paw that I can't seem to pry out. I coughed, then said, Yeah, I keep hearing things like that. It just means I'm doing a good job. Maybe you should try working for some pony else. You seem to be picking the wrong side. Trevor pulled out a laser pistol, pointing it at me and saying, Time to finish you off, Carrier. Gina lifted her red energy spear and put it in front of Sherbert. Hold up a moment. Wolfsbane said he wants her alive. She looked up at the griffin. No, he wants the thing inside her alive. The courier doesn't matter. Hmm, good point, Gina said. Let me take care of her. I owe her for the bramble. Come try and kill me, I said, pointing my rifle at Gina. Let's see how good you really are. She lunged, yelling. The rest of you take care of her friends. Don't hurt Aura. If you do, the boss will make you pay. Fuck, she moved fast. I fired my rifle, but Gina dodged to one side, spun around, and slashed through the air quicker than I thought she could do in that armor. I was just able to duck under the slash and roll away to her follow-up attack. I jumped back to my hooves and tried to get another shot. But Gina did a backflip in the air, and her spear left a red arc of light behind as it twisted around her, its sharp edge going from my face. I jumped back just in time, my body screaming in protest. The edge of the spear just nicked my cheek as it passed by, burning a hot, painful line there. She twisted the spear around again and tried to stab me right in the side, but she was blocked by my sword. I was able to pull it out just in the nick of time. She looked at the sword and stopped her attack. She took a step of a couple of steps back. Where the hell did you get that? What? This? I asked, lifting my black and silver blade. Found it. She sounded pissed when she spoke. That sword belongs to my family, a little shit. It's been lost for a hundred and sixty years. Really? Wasn't that hard to find. It was just in an old building near the kingdom. I said, lifting the sword up and smiling over the blade. Give it back, she yelled. Nope, finders keepers. She screamed and was about to attack me again. But right then, Aura came flying down towards her aunt. With how angry Gina was, she never saw the attack coming. 
until it was too late to dodge. Or as Energy Spear stabbed through the gap in Gina's armor, then pierced right through her back, right below her left wing joint. Gina screamed again as she was pinned to the platform, her own spear flying out of her grasp. I won't let her hurt you, Auntie Gina! Aura said as she held onto her spear, making sure Gina couldn't move. Gina shook as blood slowly ran down the shaft. That was a good attack, Aura. I have to admit, I never saw that coming. You're getting better. Shut up. Call off your griffins before I end you. I can't. I told you, Aura. I don't lead the Unchained Talons. I'm just the second in command. If you want them to call off, you'll have to make our boss do it. Locked over to Gina and Aura, pointing my sword at the pinned griffin. If you're second in command, then you can still tell them to back down. Gina lifted her right talon and used it to pull off the helmet to her power armor. Once she did, she smiled at me, her eyes locked onto mine. Even if I could order them to stop, I wouldn't. I wouldn't break my contract or the trust my boss gave me. Unlike my sister, I keep my oaths. So kill me or let me go. Either way, my griffins won't back down. I caught a flicker of movement to one side and jumped back as Sherbert fired her laser pistol at me. Did you forget about me, Courier? Uh, fuck. Aura, take care of your aunt. I got this one. I said, turning to face the young unicorn. She was grinning at me as she aimed her laser pistol. Time to die, Courier bitch! I don't know how many times an enemy has said that to me, but it never ends well for them. I smiled back at her as I saw some pony else quietly fighting behind her. No, it's time for you to learn a lesson, Sherbert. She looked at me confused. Then she froze up at the barrel of a black revolver pressing against the back of her head, and the stranger said on the bit of his gun, Drop it, or I'll drop you. Who are you? No, pony. Now drop it, before I blow your brains out, he said angrily. I'd do it, Sherbert. He's not one to make a threat more than once. Actually, this is the first time I've seen him actually give some pony the option to back down, I said. For a moment, her eyes were locked on mine. Then she dropped the laser pistol, saying, Fine, I don't feel like dying today anyway. Good, the stranger said. Then he swapped out his gun for a strange-looking... something. He fired a dart into Sherbert's neck. Let's just make sure you can't do anything for a while, shall we? The fuck? She said, then fell forward as she lost control of her body. Gina looked over at the stranger and said, Ah, oh, great, it's you. Aura twisted the spear around, making her aunt scream more. Shut up, Aunt Gina. Wait, you know him? I asked. The stranger looked over at Gina and sighed. We ran into each other in the past. We worked together a couple times, too. Gina said, ignoring what Aura said. Aura cursed. We can't keep doing this. It's time for you to die, Auntie Gina. Gina looked up at Aura. Do you think you have to, Aura? But before you do, let me ask you this. Why do you want me dead? You betrayed the Red Talons, you killed Gale, you've been trying to kill Shadow and the rest of us every time we've met. Aura said. No, I haven't. I've done what I can to keep you alive, Aura. You're the only one in the family I still care about. As for Shadow, I never really tried to kill her. Even now, I could have just taken her out, but I held back. As for me betraying the Red Talons, you still don't really know what happened back then. Gail got what she deserved. If you want me dead, then you'll hate me, that's fine. But don't you dare say I should die for something I didn't do. Gina said. I know enough. Do you? Gina yelled. Why don't you go talk to Gillian and get the truth out of her about what really happened that night? Better yet, why don't you talk to Apollo? He knows the truth, too. Aura was shaking with anger, but I saw her grip on the spear loosen a little. That was all Gina needed. She pulled away, Aura's spear going through her. 
Regina jumped back, then ripped the spear and the rest of the way through her body. She screamed again, then tossed the spear back to Aura. You still have a lot to learn, Aura! The stranger acted quickly. He pulled out his gun again and fired. Gina just barely dodged the shot. She dove for her own spear, grabbed it, then took to the air. Blood splattered along the ground as she did. I took hold of my plasma rifle again and fired at her, but it was too late. She flew away laughing as she pulled out a healing potion and dragged it down as she flew north. He's getting away! Aura yelled, picking up her blood-soaked spear. That bitch always finds a way to escape! It doesn't matter. We need to deal with the rest of the talents before they do any more damage. The stranger said as he flew off to help Stardust, who was fighting the two griffins. He has a point, Aura. We can deal with Gina later. I said as I turned to face the fight that was still going on with Wolfsbane and Boxtape. Rain had been able to help and get into the other set of power armor as she took off the dead ranger. But it was in the middle of her own fight with two griffins and the last steel ranger that was still on the platform with us. I know. Come on. Let's help out box tape and finish off Wolfsbane. I smiled on my plasma rifle and the sword. I agree. I ran towards the fight as Zora took to the air. As I did, box tape was able to land a hard blow on Wolfsbane, throwing the Elder flying across the platform. After the attack, he stopped and staggered a little. Not now. I need a little more time. Box tape said. Box tape, get back! Looking over, I saw the colt dodge past one of the griffins, run past box tape, then throw three spark grenades at Wolfsbane. Box tape saw it and jumped back right as the grenades went off. Wolfsbane saw this too, and his armor opened just in time for him to jump out of his power armor as it was hit by the blast. He rolled away, then got back to his hooves. Panting hard as he looked towards the colt, little brat. I made it over to Wingnut and Box Tape, aiming my rifle at the Elder. Time's up, Wolfbane. You lose. He smiled. Oh, really now? A griffin's body slammed down on the platform next to me, followed by Stardust, who pointed his rifle at Wolfsbane too. Yeah, you're finished. The stranger landed next to me as well. He looked over at Wolfsbane, saying, Give up, Elder Wolfsbane. You have no pony or griffin left to help you. Wolfsbane looked over at the stranger, saying, Who are you? I work for Nightshade. You made a threat towards him about Grimm and her daughter. I'm here to tell you that the Enclave does not respond well to threats. Wolfsbane started to laugh. Oh, so you must be that stallion I keep hearing about. The one who keeps showing up to save Shadow. Funny, I remember hearing about you before. Twelve years ago, when you were hunting Grimm. She told me that you are called the Guardian. You are the one who protects the power source of falling shadows. The stranger's eyes went wide. How do you know about that? He smiled wider. I know everything, Guardian. I know about the secret of your family. I know about the power you've sworn to protect. I even know who you are. Curious how you're able to keep up this ruse. I figured some pony would have figured out who you were by now. I looked at the stranger. Wait, that thing you showed me was tied to the program Mom's been looking for. The project she wants. That's Falling Shadows? It's nothing. It's an old story that too many ponies think is true, but it's not. It's just a lie. Box tape limped over to me, then looked over at his son. I've heard this project before. White Oak was looking into it. That was the last mission she went to look into when she died. I'm guessing Wolfsbane found her notes and was using Grimm to find it. Wolfsbane looked over at box tape. Mom didn't just go looking to the project, Father. She found information on his location. The problem is, it's locked down by some kind of special program. I took the notes from where Mom died and used them to find out more. The project is real. It's the most powerful weapon in Equestria. I looked back at him, saying, If that's true, then why did you need me or Project Stargazer? 
He looked over at me. Because Stargazer is the key. Even if the program is unlocked, the power from Stargazer is the only thing that can fully activate Falling Shadow. That's why I needed you. Aura spoke up. And what's the deal with the Mark II? It holds the notes Grimm found on the project, also where it's located. I also think the Mark II was used to lock down the program a few days before the bombs fell. That's why Sweetie Belle wanted them put into Stable 9. She wanted to keep them away from the Children of the Night. She wanted to make sure no pony could ever use it. Wolfsbane said, chuckling again. The stranger pulled out his revolver again. You're mad, Wolfsbane. Falling Shadows isn't real. It was only an idea of Night Stalker that they never finished. You may think you know everything about me and what I'm guarding, but you're wrong. Am I? It's funny because the last Guardian told me differently when I ran into him a couple of years ago in Manhattan. The stranger's eyes went wide. No. You couldn't have run into him. He's... Ha! <laughs> what? Dead? You really should have do a better job on keeping an eye on ponies who are branded from Stratus or Nimbus. The last Guardian is still alive. Either way, I can't let you live, Wolfsbane. I can't let ponies like you who use power for their own gain. The stranger said as he started to pull on the trigger. Sorry, but I'm not the one dying today. Wolfsbane said as he threw two different grenades. One was a flash bomb. It went off, blinding all of us. The second was a stun grenade. When it went off, it was like one giant pony had just kicked me. A blast of air and a sound slammed into us all, throwing us back. Before I could see again, a ringing felt in my ears. I felt some pony take hold of me and pull me away from my friends. A moment later, a foreleg was wrapped around my throat, and I could just make out box tape saying, Put her down, Wolfsbane! My vision had come back. I saw my friends were still laying there in a daze. Even the stranger. Box tape, however, slowly walked towards us as one of his guns trained on him. Wolfsbane was holding me, and I could see that we were right on the edge of the palisade. Take one more step, Dad, and she dies. Wolfsbane stopped. You're out of options, son. If you kill her, I'll kill you. Maybe. But either way, you'll be responsible for another young mare's death. Now, stand down. Wolfsbane said. Let me go, I said, trying to pull away, but the Elder held me tighter. Sentinel box tape. Dad, get out of that armor and come face me like a real stallion. If you don't, I'll kill her. Don't do it, box tape, I yelled. Box tape looked over at me, then hung his head. I can't do that, Shadow. He'll kill you if you do it, I yelled again. Maybe, but I won't let him hurt you, just to save my own life. I'm an old pony. You have a long time left to live, he said before looking back at Wolfsbane. I'll do it, but only if you give me your word as an elder that you'll let her go. I give you my word, Wolfsbane said. Now, out of the armor. My friends were just staring and starting to get back to their hooves, as box tape said. Fine. You win, son. His armor opened and the old buck slowly got out of it. I could see small holes around his flanks from what looked like needles. His body looked even worse than it had when I saw him earlier. Vervain was right. That armor was slowly killing him. Wolfsbane started to laugh. Finally. The almighty sentinel has given up. Now step away from the armor. Not until you let her go, Box Tape said weakly. No, I have no reason to now. Like I said, I need her. Anger showed on Box Tape's face as he yelled, You gave me your word! I did. But you should know by now, Father. That I won't ever tell you the truth, because you don't deserve it. Let her go, I heard Yaksha say from somewhere to the side. 
A second later, the zebra appeared and she started to flip around, slamming a rear hoof into Wolfsbane's face. He flew back, his hold on me vanishing. My body flew away from his and I started to fall off the edge of the palisade. I started to scream as I saw the edge of the platform underneath me, and far below, the destruction was done to cartwheel. Then some pony grabbed me and pulled me back. I heard box tape saying, Don't worry, Shadow, I gotcha! I looked up at the old buck as he smiled down at me. Then he pulled hard and got me back to safety. Thanks, box tape. He smiled. No thanks needed. As he spoke, I saw Yaksha trying to land another blow against Wolfsbane, but the elder ducked under her attack and he countered. From the looks of it, he knew how to fight a zebra. His blow connected under Yaksha's chin and sent her flying back towards my friends who were starting to run towards us to help. He turned and charged box tape and me. I'll kill both of you if I have to! For a moment, I saw something in box tape's eyes. He looked at me for a second and smiled right as Wolfsbane spun around to kick us both off the palace at Age. Box tape pushed me out of the way. Wolfsbane kick landed right in the middle of the old pony's chest. Box tape flew away. I heard something crack in his chest as he did. As if in slow motion, the old block flew past the edge of the platform. A smile still plastered on his face. Then, before he started to fall, Box tape pulled out an old-looking pistol. As he did, he sat around the bit. Sorry, son. And he fired. Box tape, uh, Wolfsbane's head whipped to one side as the bullet from box tape ripped through his right eye. It didn't go through his head. It just passed through the side of his eye, destroying the eyeball and part of the socket, but not killing him. Blood flew and Wolfsbane went down as he screamed. Box tape just laughed as his body fell into the dark night, fell out of sight fell towards the town he helped create and protect. I watched as the old buck who took me in, who helped me when I first got to town, who gave me a job and a way to find my mom, vanished from my life. A moment later, a distant crash filled the now silent night sky. As that sound echoed through the air, it was followed by a loud boom as lightning struck the wasteland far away, filling the air with thunder. Rain started to fall, and all I could do was look towards the last place I saw box tape vanish. Something inside me felt empty. I had to be dreaming. As the rain started to fall and the thunder rolled, I heard Ravane scream, Dad! I turned to see her running towards the end of the palisade. And, she did, I saw Wolfsbane lying there, holding a hoof to his destroyed eye. <laughs> Finally, the old man is dead! Blood was pooling around his head, but he still just laughed. I pulled out my plasma rifle, just a few feet away. I lifted him a magic and screamed, You'll pay for that! I don't think so, I heard a mare say. Looking over, I saw another unicorn appear. I didn't know her, but she was dressed in a scribe's uniform. Her horn flashed and all my friends and I were lifted into the air. I think the battle's over. Goodbye, courier. Her horn flashed again, and all of us were thrown off the palisade. As I started to fall, my body following box tapes, all I could think about was one thing. If I live, I won't rest until he pays for what he did. He may have won this time, but Wolfsbane was a dead stallion. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Pickpocket. You sure do have some sticky hooves. During your time in the wasteland, you've gotten good at sneaking around and letting your magic or hooves find their way in another pony's <coughs> saddlebags. You now have a better chance, 25%, to pickpocket any pony without getting caught.